Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be a wrap-up of some of the things that I read in the second half of May, which was a bit of a letdown, to be honest, compared to the things I read in the first half. But, to be fair, I did spend a lot of time playing the remastered version of Mass Effect during the second half of this month, so who knows, maybe that ruined some things. Although I don't think so, I think I just made some poor choices. So first up, I picked up Usman Jalaluddin's second book, Hanahan carries on. Unlike her first novel, Aisha at Last, this is not romance in the genre sense. It is a romantic comedy, or it's in, based on or inspired by the movie You've Got Mail. Now, full disclosure here, I think You've Got Mail is awful. I don't think it's romantic. I think the whole couple dynamic in it is... I was gonna say weird, but not even weird. I don't like the power dynamic at all. And this stays quite true to that, uh, except instead of being an independent and a chain bookstore, it's a family restaurant and a kind of chain restaurant. So with this, as with her first novel, I liked a lot of the neighborhood stuff. Um, this is also set, set here in Scarborough, although to me it felt, even though it's set in the current day, it felt very 15 to 20 years ago in terms of a lot of the demographic stuff that was going on, which was interesting. I liked a lot of this in terms of the side characters. There are a lot of cousins and family members and friends. And I really enjoyed that because, again, it was the same kind of local flavor that I liked in the first novel. But because I really dislike You've Got Mail and that whole relationship dynamic with the secrets and the power differential and a lot of lying is going on, or withholding of information if you prefer, and I just don't like that. So I essentially was actively rooting against the main couple. And again, I don't know how fair that is because I knew that this is inspired by a movie that I don't like. So um, I left that unrated on Goodreads, so if we're connected on Goodreads you may have seen me say I'm not rating that because I went in knowing it's based on something I don't like. So yeah, I liked the peripheral stuff, but I just loathed the main relationship and essentially knew that going in. So it's definitely a case where I'd like to see this author write something that's not inspired by something that I hate. Um, as with her first novel and as with the peripheral bits of this, but if you like You've Got Mail and you'd like to see a version of that that's set in the current day but involving halal restaurants instead of bookshops, here you go. This, is, this book is that, but I hate the dynamic and I didn't like it any more here than I did in that movie, so yeah. Uh, switching from a modern romantic comedy to a modern classic romantic tragedy. Next up I read Ali and Nino, and the author on this is named Gurban Saeed, but that is a pen name and there have for 80 years been arguments about who this author really was. This is sometimes credited to the Azerbaijani writer Yusuf Fazarov Cemin Ziminli, uh, who died in the Gulag when he was in his 50s. He was a victim of some of Stalin's purges. It's sometimes credited to Isad Bey, who was born in Ukraine to Georgian parents and grew up in Azerbaijan, and whose original name was Lev Nussbaum. He uh, changed his name and converted to Islam before moving to Germany in the 30s. So a lot of people like to argue about whether he converted just so that his identity card when he moved to Germany wouldn't indicate that he was Jewish. Um, because it was the early 30s, so presumably he wouldn't have moved there knowing there was a genocide coming, but I guess he knew about, but he would have known about the segregation elements and stuff. He wrote under that name a lot of <laughs> kind of trashy Orientalist folk stories. And what's interesting is this kind of takes bits and pieces of both of theirs, but the name, but the pen name is actually copyrighted to this Austrian Baroness. And so what actually probably happened with this, if you dig through all the arguments, is that there was an original story by Chemen Ziminli that was essentially translated into German and kind of folklored up by Issa Bey, who then published it because he had been sort of outed as having originally been Jewish in Germany. So he was uh, in hiding in Italy, but he still wanted to make money. So he published this under this other name that the Austrian Baroness published. It is a wild story that is frankly more interesting than the book itself is. This book is as I said, a romantic tragedy. It's set during the First World War and then during the very brief period that Azerbaijan was independent in the early 20s, so the Russian Empire had fallen, there was the Bolshevik Re Revolution, and before Azerbaijan became part of the Soviet Union there was this brief period in there where this couple, who is an Azerbaijani guy and a 
Georgian girl get together and they live in various places that are now Russia, that are now Iran, that are now Georgia and Azerbaijan, obviously. I picked this up mostly because I had just seen the film version that came out about five years ago. This is also weirdly dated. It feels like kind of a knockoff of a David Lean movie. Like you could watch, you could watch this back to back with the version of Dr. Zhivago from the 60s, the, the David Lean one with Omar Sharif and Julie Christie, and it would feel of that era, which is weird because the movie's from, I think, 2015. So I was curious to see what this would be like. And this is definitely dated. There's a lot of stuff about gender roles and a lot of stuff that was clear is clearly written for a presumably German audience in the 1930s. But it is still kind of an interesting time capsule. It hasn't aged super well, but it also isn't as offensive as it could be, I guess. Yeah, so I don't know. The story behind that novel is a lot more interesting than the novel itself, as I said. Changing genres entirely, I also read two collected editions of comics. Uh, the first of which was Commanders in Crisis, which is written by Steve Orlando and drawn by David Tinto. This is a book where I enjoyed the art style far more than I enjoyed the writing. It is not a terrible idea, but it, it feels like something that somebody should have invented 20 years ago. It doesn't feel, I don't know, it doesn't feel timely at all, and this just came out this past year. It's set, it's basically a superhero story set in a multiverse in which they're in the last universe existing. The group of heroes, the commanders in this group, are all US presidents from different universes who were all the first, like the first gay president and the first uh, black female president and whatnot, and it's, it's cheesy. It's insufferably cheesy. And the, as I said, the art is fine, but <laughs> I just read it and went, what? This is dumb. <laughs> like, this is not clever in the slightest. So the action scenes weren't bad, but the whole concept behind it just it was dumb. <laughs> and that's not the best descriptor, but which I thought was weird because Steve Orlando is somebody who's writing on corporate books I quite enjoy, like his Midnighter series and his Midnighter on Apollo series were great. Um, but this was not great. If this was a book that had this same concept 20 years ago, I would kind of say this is tacky but okay. But yeah, in the current day I'm just like, why would you even come up with this concept? It's no. Uh, so that was disappointing. And because I'm apparently a glutton for punishment, I read another one of his creator-owned superhero books. And this one is called The Pull, and was illustrated by Ricardo Lopez Ortiz. This book I liked the concept of more. It is a more straightforward science fiction book. The Earth is in environmental crisis. The art on this is a little sloppy. It wasn't to my taste, but I think it will be to other people's. Uh, hopefully I'll have remembered to take screenshots and I'll insert them here. But this one was not well paced at all and I felt like the world building, the percentage that was devoted to world building versus ideas versus plot was off. So again, this was disappointing and surprised me because often with comic book writers, if you like their corporate superhero books, usually their, the stuff that they've created themselves will be even better. And in this case, it was exactly the opposite. I far prefer his corporate work to his creator and stuff. These were not that good. Yeah, so that was all disappointing. So finally, I returned to my normal kind of reading and picked up some political nonfiction. And uh, this is Chroniques, which is a collection of Kamal Daoud's uh, writing for an Algerian newspaper. He's a columnist. He also writes some novels. This is a very odd thing to have been translated into English. This is was translated by who? Elizabeth Zerovsky. And because it is very specifically um, this political column, the vast majority of which are specific to Algerian politics, but it also is a collection covering several years, and each year's worth is very timely and of the moment. So it's an interesting portrait. Um, and it's not exclusively Algerian politics. There's some stuff about Tunisia, Morocco, France, there's a bit about and Egypt. It's very Mediterranean and very uh, at the overlap of the Arabosphere and the Francosphere. But uh, I feel like most people who are interested in that would read this in the French and not 
bother with an English translation of it. Um, and it is uh, a very straightforward style. And I mean, I picked it up in English because it is literally half the price of the French one here. <laughs> That's just a fluke of the Canadian bookselling market, I think. I was left wondering why this in particular was translated, because it's a strange selection. It doesn't really work as... Like, I wouldn't call it an introduction because it is just the column. And it's interesting, and in a few parts I've, I've been reading basically a year at a time in clumps, and even that is maybe not ideal. It is the kind of thing where you maybe want to read one section and then look up what specifically was happening at the time that that was published, because as I said, it was all written to be timely. But if it's from 2011 or 2012, you kind of have to go back and, and look at all of that. So I'm enjoying it, and it is interesting, but I think if you don't know anything about Algerian politics, I don't know that that's the right introduction to it. Um, I mean, maybe it is, maybe something will catch your eye and that'll lead to other reading, but it is an odd, <laughs> that it exists in English is slightly odd to me. But I mean, maybe I'm wrong and there are a lot of people who are interested in Algerian politics who don't read French, but I, I, <laughs> that would be surprising to me, but I don't know. In any case, if that is you, it's worth picking up. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a target market where I'm thinking, is that a target market that really exists? I don't know. And again, it's hard to talk about without digging into the politics because it is about such a variety of things. And Daoud is interesting in that he's very critical of not just politicians at each of the extremes, but essentially across the political spectrum. So he will often be criticized from people from all different angles. And uh, you'll sometimes read criticism of his work that is essentially from people with completely opposing views who accuse him of being on that opposite side because he criticizes everyone, which again I think is not necessarily what everyone's going to be looking for, but I enjoy seeing someone who criticizes everyone, so uh, I'm on board for that. And I guess if you have read his novels and you're curious about that, um, yeah, it might be worth picking up. I think that's it. I feel like I might be forgetting something, but... I have a couple of books that I'm partway through, but as I said, Mass Effect is eating all my free time, so uh, we'll see how that goes. In any case, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear what you thought about them. Um, if you have read any, um, I know Katie from Books and Things was running a readathon for books published between 1900 and 1950, which Ali and Nino fulfilled for me. Were you reading anything for that readathon? Was it weirdly dated? <laughs> Was it more interesting for the context than for the book like that was? I'd be curious to hear about that. Um, and also, if you have read comic book writers who you think are better on corporate books than they are on creator-owned ones, I'd be curious to know if you think that of Steve Orlando to start with, but if there are other authors that you feel the same about, the same way about too. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.